Hello and welcome to Video Reveals. I'm Colin Smith. If you just imported a video file and only got audio and not audio and video, this tutorial is for you. If you're also confused by what's up with QuickTime, this tutorial is for you. All right, I've done all the work for you and I've consulted Adobe support on all of these topics to make sure that they're accurate. I'm going to ask you to have some patience because there are a lot of things to cover. Not everyone's solution is the same. That's the confusing part. Some of this might be incredibly easy and you're fixed and you're on your own. Um, some of you might not be fixed with any of these solutions, but we're going to try. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so what we're going to look at, the issues, actions that you can take, and what if nothing else works? But let's clear up a term here, what a codec is. It's the compression type used in a media file. Don't confuse this with a format, a format like a .mov file. MOV is just a container. MP4 is just a container. Really important to understand that those are containers. There's a huge amount of different codecs in a .mov file. So a lot of times somebody will just say, what's an MOV? That means nothing. The MOV can be anything from uncompressed video to H.264 and everything in between. So you have to understand codecs. You can't get away from using codecs. Codecs are in your computer. That's what allows you to record video and shoot video and edit and playback. Your camera records with a codec. A lot of DSLRs record with an H.264 codec, which is highly compressed. Next up is a little history. This is also important. Apple owns QuickTime. The industry completely adopted QuickTime, but QuickTime was never fully updated. In fact, the 32-bit legacy version is dead. This is typically the QuickTime 7 era of QuickTime is dead. And as a result, Adobe removed support in the April 2018 versions of After Effects, Media Encoder, Premiere Pro, removed it completely. So it was gone. A lot of the problems that people have is because that codec is now removed. Now there's a link in the description to take you to this page talking about Adobe dropping uh, QuickTime 7 format. And what's important is that if you scroll down, you'll see all the different codecs that are supported by After Effects, Media Encoder, and Premiere Pro. So there's lots of, of formats uh, that will support importing um, and, and exporting. So you're in good hands. Okay, so let's look at the issues. First of all, imported file is audio only, or you get an error of unsupported format or anytime something looks wrong. Let's look at some actions that we can take. So the first one is you've imported a file and it's audio only. This happens when the audio codec is supported, but the video codec isn't. Yes, so to make this even more complicated, one file actually has to have two different codecs. The video codec has nothing to do with the audio codec, and the audio codec has nothing to do with the video codec. So when Premiere Pro is importing this, it, it looks at the file and it makes a, a decision that it, it can support the audio. Well, we'll bring that in, but we can't support the video. Here's one solution. Hold Option and Shift or Alt and Shift immediately after launching Premiere Pro. And some people have trouble doing this. You have to do it very quick. So if you're launching from the dock in the Mac or from the Start menu in Windows, launch Hold. Launch Hold. And you'll know you're successful in the newest version of Premiere Pro because you'll get a dialog prompt coming up to ask you to, to uh, um, reset the cache and the, and the uh, preferences. This works, I'd say 50% of the time. When I get a comment where someone says, it's audio only, they do this, then they write back and say, yay, this, this uh, worked perfectly. 
The problem is they write back and say, it happened again. Well, guess what? You got to keep clearing the cache. Is there any way to clear the cache all the time? Nope. Um, let's. I'll talk about why I'm so successful and I don't have any of these problems in a minute. So that's one solution. Option shift on Mac or alt shift, clear the cache, and you have to quit Premiere Pro. So you quit Premiere Pro, start it, hold it, clear it, load it, okay? Convert the file. <laughs> and when Adobe told me to do this, I said back to them, well, isn't this kind of odd? You're asking me to convert a file and I can't even import the damn file? Uh, well, if that's the case, then there's a third option. Use an older version of Premiere Pro. So let me show you how you can do that. In the Creative Cloud desktop app, if you go to apps, find Premiere Pro, click on the drop down, click on manage, click on other versions, and here's where you can install something like the 2017 version of Premiere Pro. You can run both the most current version and this version at the same time, and this will allow you to uh, edit and work and open up those other formats because it will support those older formats. Um, that is, that's a clunky solution in my opinion, but that is one option. Let's look at some other issue. Sometimes it's the file. You have to convert to another format. So sometimes it's not Premiere Pro at all. It's that file. That file is just a problem and needs to be converted. How do you know that? You don't. Sometimes it's the user system. You got to clean the system and remove other codecs. Sometimes it's a bug in the program. There is no easy fix. So that's why I asked you at the beginning to have patience. This is not one of those, hey, I found a YouTube with all my video with all my solutions, click this button. And because there are different levels of problems, it doesn't mean everybody's solution will be found. Um, so you can't get around this. Trust me, I've worked on this very, very hard to make sure that we're getting the right answers. So here's another one that I think is really important. Did you try to import a folder with non-video stuff in it? And you can see here's an example of a bunch of thumbnail clips. And that's when you get this import file error uh, failure. This happens when someone is just picking a whole bunch of stuff in a folder and they're bringing it in. They get an error. And the error is telling them, well, the thumbnails are completely useless in Premiere Pro. And some people will get baffled. They'll think, hey, my video is broke. I can't bring it in. No, you're just trying to import something in that isn't a video. Use the media browser. Don't use file import. Uh, so this is this this will happen with some video formats too. But if you're using non-video, if you're trying to import something that isn't video, you'll get this error. Here's some good news. All of my issues are gone by removing every bit of Apple software off my system and any other codecs. I shoot on a Blackmagic cinema camera. This is the original cinema camera. And Blackmagic likes to give you a whole bunch of crap to install on your computer. I remove everything. I don't have QuickTime installed. I don't have any Apple software. I don't have any Blackmagic software. I have nothing. I remove it and I have a clean system. And I have zero errors. None, nada, nothing. I have no problems at all since I removed all of that crap because the good news is Adobe now includes 64-bit QuickTime. So one of the problems with that old version of QuickTime is it was 32-bit. And I'm not talking about 32-bit color. I'm talking about 32-bit versus 64-bit in the way that the file runs, like a 64-bit operating system like Windows 10 or the latest version of, of Mac OS. These are 64-bit operating systems running 64-bit applications. And then you're running this 32-bit um, QuickTime. Adobe actually got around this by writing their own version of QuickTime in a 64-bit uh, way, but it was never the best solution. And because Apple owned QuickTime, it was a big mess. So Adobe now includes 64-bit QuickTime in the box, even on the Mac. That's why I can now export out ProRes um, on Windows. It's This is all Apple certified. So I, I said I'm, I don't have any Apple software on my system. I don't. This is included in your stall, install of Premiere Pro, 64-bit QuickTime. I have no problems. 
I still use QuickTime files, no problem. In fact, I can import all my files from my Canon 5D Mark III and my Blackmagic camera. I can import drone footage and many other H.264 and MP4 formats. So when I say I remove QuickTime, it doesn't mean I can't use any. I import everything in Premiere Pro and it just works. All right, here's the last thing. If nothing else works, what can you do? Call Adobe support. I wish there was a better answer. You see that little cup of coffee there? Go have a pee, go get a cup of coffee, sit and relax and have a ton of patience because it's not going to be an easy fix. You're doing something incredibly complicated on your system. So if you're a newbie and you're wondering why this is complicated, well, video editing at this level is a very professional uh, environment and it requires um, a lot of different interconnected things like the video, the codec, the, the application, your system, and a lot of other things. So my suggestion is always to run the most clean system possible and don't just install a whole bunch of junk on your system and it ends up breaking Premiere Pro. Go through all your installed apps, get rid of anything you don't need and run a clean system. And again, that um, option shift or alt shift when you're loading Premiere Pro Clearing the cache solves 50% of people's problems. All right, I wish you all the best. I really hope that, that some of this information will help. If you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? If this helped you uh, fix things, then you can support us through PayPal, one time or monthly donation. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to go and and go through all the mud and find all the answers and consolidate them into an easy to understand and easy to follow tips here on Video Review.